Thanks, David Swanson, Gillespie Avenue. Uh, you know, we've heard this evening appreciation for programs from the Department of State, the EPA, the PBS, people in need of housing. But if we only talk about that, then people hear us and misunderstand and they think we're talking about the size of the government and they declare that Trump is turning off the money flow to the wasteful spending. Absolute nonsense. Let's be crystal clear here. Donald Trump has proposed the exact same budget, the exact same size government, but he wants to move huge amounts of money out of everything that we care about, that we've heard appreciation for, into the military. If we don't say that, people misunderstand. And this is the, the point of this council having the courage to say both sides of this argument. Uh, so this is not a, a big, small government debate. I want massive increases to all those programs we've heard appreciation for this evening and a drastically smaller government. How is that possible? Because Donald Trump is proposing 60 to 65 percent of discretionary spending go to one thing, the military, more wars. The thing that he says correctly, blurting out the obvious as he occasionally does over the past 16 years, has created a hornet's nest out of the Middle East, made us less safe, not more safe draining our money, this you know, fiscal responsibility of dumping all our grandchildren's unearned pay into the one department that's never audited, into the Department of So-Called Defense, that makes us less safe, not more safe. The United States is, is putting well over $700 billion into this one little program. There are only 20 countries in the world that hit $10 billion. Nine of them are in NATO. Another eight of them are close U.S. allies. Three of them are potential U.S. allies if we took a different course. One of those three, Russia, the, the, this great fear, this demon out there to get us, has dropped its spending on the military in the last three years from $70 billion down to under $50 billion. This is their, this is their evil plot to dominate the world. Uh, so when, when we look at something like this Gallup poll that shows people around the world seeing the United States as the greatest threat to peace on earth. And we dare to mention that. It's not because we're cheering for it. It's not because we want that to be the case. It's because we want to start the process of changing that, of bringing people things they find helpful rather than occupying armies. Here we are today, 14 years since shock and awe, since this incredible destruction of a city that began an incredible destruction of a country and a region and U.S. troops still killing people in Iraq, and in Syria, and in Afghanistan, and in Yemen. Endless, endless warfare. It's time we took a stand. I, I'd like everybody, if you could, to stand up if you support moving money in the opposite direction from that proposed by Donald Trump, from the military to human and environmental needs. Thank you. Thank you. Paul, Paul Nelson. Good evening. My name is Adele Roof. I've lived in the city for many years. At present, I'm right outside the city, but we share the same congressman, so I feel this is relevant. Um, in his last State of the Union address on January 12, 2016, President Obama said, quote, let me tell you something. The United States of America is the most powerful nation on earth. It's not even close. We spend more on our military than the next eight nations combined. End quote. Given that at least four of those countries on the top military spenders list are United States allies, Saudi Arabia, the United Kingdom, France, and Japan, what we spend is clearly offensive spending in every sense of that word. Under your leadership, the City Council, you have the opportunity to distinguish yourselves as a model for other cities. We can protest this budget of death and doom, this $54 billion that will sacrifice clean water and energy, the arts, aid to developing nations, community block grants that support such valuable local services as Meals on Wheels. Foreign aid makes up 1% of the federal budget and is seen by most military and foreign policy leaders as an excellent investment in U.S. national security interests. And yet Trump's budget would lop off more than 30% of this measly 1% dedicated to foreign aid. We must do our part to protest 
this dangerous trajectory of increased military spending. If you adopt this resolution, I can take it with pride to our Congressman Garrett. I can post it on Facebook to show friends all over the nation what our community is doing. This resolution might inspire and encourage other communities to follow suit. The German theologian Gustav Niemöller regretted that he had not done more just to speak out against the Nazis. Here's what he said. First they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Let's speak out before there was no one left to speak for us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm uh, Dan Saint. I live in Charlottesville, and I'm a former Army captain, served in the 82nd Airborne Division, 3rd Infantry Division, Special Forces, and at the Defense Intelligence Agency. I'm here to speak in favor of this uh, fund human and environmental needs, not militarism proposal. Um, what I really hope to do is, is my part of this tonight is just really bring some awareness to this. You know, I can say thank you to President Trump for bringing this to our, our awareness that the fact that he, you know, is cutting so many social programs that, are world, that, that touch all of us and our families, it's really made us very aware of how much money we're spending on the military. And I'm also from Veterans for Peace, and so we, we've been aware of it for a while. <laughs> but, um, you know, the $600 billion is a lot of money. Uh, for anybody. Uh, but we actually spent closer to a trillion dollars. That $600 billion is just a DOD portion. There are many other parts of that, and I don't want to get into a uh, budget discussion, but it's close to a billion dollars. It's about 70% of our, um, our discretionary spending, and it's about 25, 26% of our total spending. So several years ago, a man told me a story about a peak moment in his life. He'd been working as a missionary in college, and he, worked, he went to an African village to help dig a well. So he helped this community dig a well, and, and now they had fresh water. So before they had dug this well, the young women of the village had to walk four miles to the river and then four miles back with as much water as they could carry. Most of the children in the village got sick, and many of them died from the parasites and bacteria that were in the water. After the well, now they had fresh drinking water, and the young girls can now go to school. So when you think about that, this proposed $54 billion increase to an already obscene, insane military budget could fund 4.5 million wells across the world. So just imagine if children grew up around the world with a vision or a memory of Americans who brought fresh water or economic opportunity or education or schools to their villages and their homes and their, their whatever their towns, if, if, if we were known for bringing that rather than them growing up with bomb fragments with stamped, stamped with made in America, it would be a very different world in a very different future, would our children and our grandchildren and my grandchild, Amelia, be safer in the future if we had more nuclear weapons or we had more fresh water in the world? Thank you. Thank you. I'm Virginia Rosnack. I live in Albemarle County, but some of our tax dollars go here, so I feel like I have some standing. I'm here to support the resolution that City Council urge Congress to move our tax dollars from military expenditures to human and environmental needs. I'm a member of the Charlottesville Center for Peace and Justice. The proposed budget does not promote peace and it doesn't promote justice. I'd like to speak briefly on the peace aspect. President Trump has said he wants the U.S. to have nuclear supremacy. <coughs> We've been there before. In the 80s, Ronald Reagan added hundreds of billions of dollars 
to the national debt by building many, many new nuclear missiles. In response, the eminent physicist Carl Sagan estimated that as few as 12 nuclear explosions would trigger a nuclear winter. Some of you may have heard that term before, a nuclear winter. It would be uh, the same as what killed all the dinosaurs. It means uh, it happens when one or more explosions throw up so much dust into the atmosphere, and it stays there for quite a while, that the sun is blocked, plants do not grow, and people and animals starve. So uh, if as few as 12 nuclear explosions could wipe out much of humanity, you know, the dust goes all around the world, much of humanity and animals, it is ridiculous to talk about nuclear supremacy. Therefore, I uh, urge you to adopt this resolution that sends, does not spend more money on nuclear weapons and military, but spends it on uh, human and environmental resources. Thank you. Diana.